Hey there, so this is gonna be another video about production and mixing in Reaper. For this video, I'm gonna focus on what I think is the best free bundle of plugins that you can get. It's not just one plugin, it's a whole bundle of them by Melda. Now, a lot of people use this bundle. A lot of people are aware of this company. I think one, one thing I've heard a lot is just that they're confusing or hard to use. Uh, which is sort of true. They do give you a lot of power and th um, things often aren't super well documented, but they're really incredible. There's a ton of stuff in their free bundle that's worth using. So as you can see on their website, it's just a ton. This is all stuff you get for free. There are tiny limitations with the free plugins you can get the whole bundle. Um, it's on sale at the moment, but it's usually 49 euros uh, just to get some new features. Like you can change the style and size. There's a sonogram. It, you can use their own preset browser. You can still save presets. Otherwise, you just have to use your DAWs presets uh, manager, which is what I would do anyway. Um, there's upsampling, etc. But so... They have tons of stuff, distortion, flanger, EQ. Um, there's even a convolution reverb that's free now, which is great. Um, there's a, not very many free convolution reverbs. I know there's one included in Reaper, but this one comes with uh, samples, so that's great. Um, and it has what I think is probably the best free EQ. Uh, Reaper on its own comes with a great EQ, but this one has some great options like you can do uh, mid side processing and eq right in the interface so i'm just going to go for this video i'm going to start this is just going to be about the eq and a little overview of the way that melda organizes things so like i said there is an upgrade which i have um, done myself uh, you might not have all of these options, but the basic functionality is all going to be there. Um, you can change the style in the paid version, which I've done a little bit, but the style when you just get it for free should be really close. Over here, there's a toolbar. This is where if you have uh, it enabled, you can do upsampling. This is where you can change whether it's left and right or mid-side, or di some different uh, other types of processing for the left and right channel. There's an automatic gain compensation. If you turn this on, it'll attempt to match any EQ changes you make so that you, even if you boost or cut, it's still gonna be relatively the same volume. There's a limiter for the output that you can enable. These are different states which you can save. So say I could cut and boost here and if I want to hear that this is just toggling between those um, uh, there's this is a quick toggle between the last two selected states there's like copy and paste and duplicate there is um, undo and redo you can attach stuff to MIDI which I don't really use but you can do some wacky stuff with this if you want to have particular things be controlled by uh, incoming MIDI messages. Here's an input and output. I'm just going to close that. I don't need that for the EQ personally. So we have this analyzer here in the EQ area. It's normalized so that it's always at zero dB so that no matter how quiet or loud the sounds are, it's always going to show the same. Actually, I don't really like that personally. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off. And if you go into the settings, that opens a window for your analyzer. I like to just have the resolution lower, like around 120 or 130, 140, somewhere in there. That's way below humans here, but it just means that you have this space, so. just because I don't like the normalized thing. I like it to be like actually showing something related to the real volume coming in. This is your smoothness control. 
just for this, um, if you want to view the analyzer as just like an overall shape or something with more details on the actual frequency content. There's ob obviously a ton of settings here. Uh, some are available in the totally free version and some aren't, but these two smoothness and resolution are probably the most important, but yeah. And now I can save this. I could save this as my default if this is what I wanted to show up every time. Um, I've actually already done that, so I won't. A cool thing that this has is an auto listen feature. If I drag this band, it's now soloing the area that's being EQ'd, which can be pretty useful if you're trying to find something. You also have areas which you can turn on. So this is the drum area that shows little reference points for EQing. This is maybe more oblique, but might be useful. This is pretty interesting and useful. It's like it lines up with the keyboard, so you can see musically where your EQ frequencies are. Even if you don't have any of the areas turned on, you'll notice that when you hover, it's telling you what frequency you're at. It's telling you the musical note that that relates to. And then below that, it's telling you how many positive or minus decibels there is. If you double click in an area, it'll snap the nearest unused band to be that um, where you double click. So if I wanna cut in this low frequency, I can go down here and double click it's automatically turned this band on and put it down there. So you can quickly, if you want to start, you know where you want to start, that's a good way to do it. You can double click to turn bands on and off. There's more controls for the bands down here, but if you want a lot more control, you want a lot more control you can right click and it brings up this whole menu you can toggle between the bands and you can change what type of filter the band is and this is where if you'd like to either do left right left and right differently or mid side this is where you do that so if I change if I click on the fourth band and I change it to be right only you can hear that this particular band of the EQ is only processing the right channel. This one's still in the middle. If I change the mode to instead of left press right, to be mid plus side, this is now affecting the side band. I could put my um, bottom EQ number one. I could turn that into a high pass and put it into side mode to monoize the low end. Something people commonly do. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about in this EQ that I actually don't know of any other EQs that can do this personally. You have this harmonic section. So the harmonic section will add boosts or cuts relatively um, in the frequency or of the frequency that you're boosting. If I turn down the Q, you can see them more pointy. Now, what's really useful about this is it can be kind of, it sounds weird if you boost. And that could be like, you could automate that or something as an effect if you wanted. But often when you have strange room resonance frequencies, they aren't, they're not just going to be the one note. It's going to be like a hum, and then there will be harmonics of that hum that are generated higher up. So you can actually use this to cut out room resonance or sometimes drum resonance. Um, 
if I turn off the harmonics, anything in the Melda plugins, if you uh, right click it, it'll go back to its original value. So I'll turn this off for now. I'll turn on the auto listen. Trying to find that, the tone of the snare. And now if I turn on the harmonics now, pulling out even more of the snare. But if you overdo it, it sounds very strange. Again, that's something you could use as an effect, um, but maybe not. <laughs> but for this use, I have used this a few times in mixes and found that it really helped get rid of some odd uh, snare harmonics or room resonance. So yeah, hopefully that's useful. I'm going to do some more videos showing uh, some of my favorite of these free bundles, but highly recommend you download it. They're great and um, can't argue with free. Thanks. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.